And the other thing is you looked at the audience a lot, but you never went kind of beyond the second row. There's a whole lot of people out there. So try to look out and around. Look at that guy over there and look at those guys back there. Try to try to engage everybody in the room. It draws the whole room into you. Yeah. But, but that's it. That's great. All right. You're up next, sir. And the time is perfect as well. And tell us your name. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Derek. And uh, in the spirit of building in surprises, that's what I'm doing right here. I'm surprising myself. Um, I'm trying to harness my own butterflies and fear because I'm tremendously uh, intimidated by public speaking. I'm typically socially awkward to some degree as well. Um, many of you know me. I've been in this yard for about three years. And uh, I'm a firm believer in growing through what you go through. So. I wanted to just take this opportunity to try to push past some of my fear and uh, take advantage of one of the many opportunities uh, here on E-Yard. I want to thank Prison Fellowship Academy, Mr. Ackerman, uh, and IPEP for making these opportunities available to us all. And uh, man, that's all I got, really. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> Couple of things. Why are you nervous? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what's going? What I mean? Are you, are you okay if I? No, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what's going, kind of going through your head when you stand in front of a room full of people, like here? What's going through your head? Nothing. I'm blank. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> anxious. I'm blanked out. Right. But what's driving the anxiety? That's the, <sighs> that's really the question of of why why be anxious at all. Uh, probably a lack of preparation because it was a very spontaneous decision to get up here and I didn't have anything planned so I just felt like I want to just push past this fear and see what happens if I get on the microphone right but the fear is a fear of I want you to define it which I'm going to keep pushing you the fear is a fear of what um, looking foolish maybe okay. I don't know, being dumb being judged um, yeah, not performing well. Right. Some insecurity or something like that. Yeah. Right. And that's that's natural. So, so don't take that as awkward or unique to you. It's not. It's very natural. So what if you decided, I'm not going to worry about what they think of me. Just, just try for a minute. I'm not going to worry about what they think of me. I'm not going to worry about looking foolish. I'm not going to worry about making a mistake. I'm just going to give them the best I can. Right? I'm gonna give them the very best I can. I'm gonna speak about something that's important to me. It could be anything again. It could be your favorite dish, right? Speak about something that's important to you. But I'm not gonna worry now about looking foolish. I'm not gonna worry about being judged. I'm not gonna worry about what they think of me. Can you do that? I think so. All right, so I want you to talk about something that you know well, you're confident about, I want you to put it behind you, thinking about what any of them think about you, right? Stop worrying about what somebody might say in the yard later on, or in the house, or whatever. To put all that behind you, just give them your best. What's something you can share with them that is your best? What is awesome about Derek, or something Derek is really passionate about? All right. Handball. Uh, although I am passionate about handball, I think I'm more passionate about um, rehabilitating myself. Um, I'm guilty of the murder of I've been incarcerated for 12 years, and for a very long time, I lacked any form of accountability and empathy. Um, I was very fortunate to get involved with a program called Vogue, which is the Victim Offender Education Group. And through that curriculum, I was able to develop accountability, understand what true empathy is, and through that process, heal. Um, it is a restorative justice program that really focuses on fixing myself and in so doing, healing my community as well. Um, it, it was really just kind of like a lightning bolt that struck me when I truly understood 
accountability, that I was solely responsible for the harm I inflicted upon countless people and my community. And once I began to grasp that responsibility and, and through suffering some losses of my own, I, I, I experienced pain. And once I knew what real pain was and that I was truly responsible for causing that pain for, to so many others, it, it just flipped a switch in me and I just immediately no longer wanted to harm anybody. And since I've made that revelation in my life, I have committed myself to a life of living amends, to honor my victim, to truly change myself. And um, in so doing, I have uh, been able to participate with the program as a facilitator. Some of you know me in that role. And uh, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity to heal and help others heal. Thank you. Now that is awesome. That was awesome. You spoke about something of passion, about what happened in your life, or the actions in your life, to want to make amends. Is a story of encouragement that a lot of people need to hear. A lot of people need to hear it. But they need to hear it. And so I would take the time, if I were you, if you haven't done this already, to write out your story. Just write out that whole story, right? And practice delivering that story and encouraging it for others. Uh, wherever you can. That was awesome.